Hello and welcome everybody. Today I'm here in Odense, Denmark, at where Schunk is holding its expert days on service robotics. My goal is to find more about, about the future of robotics and that's why I'm talking with Hendrik Schunk right now. Hendrik, uh, do you use any kind of service robotic robot at your home? Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, if a vacuum cleaner is a service robot, I think it is. Uh, and no, because um, there could be more applied to, to the home environment. Uh, but we are waiting, or all roboticists are waiting for the next big, big uh, killer application, so to say. Um, but it's not so easy because uh, we are talking about an unstructured environment. But a, a robot that is uh, cleaning up uh, dishes and uh, putting it into, into the dishwasher would be a nice invention, I think. Yes, that's true. I also waiting for a robot like that. But uh, let's get back to business now. So um, what do you think? What is uh, Where is the future of service robotic moving to? What's happening? I think the future of service robotic is uh, progressing in a lot of new markets and applications uh, like the hotels and uh, hospitals, also food processing. Um, all of them have been seen the last five years in, in, uh, in uh, how do you say, in, uh, in first steps. But now you can see that it's, uh, it's continuing technology-wise uh, to bring new ideas in. Um, what is also visible is that the topic cloud data-driven uh, technology and um, uh, artificial intelligence are more and more being discussed at the event. Um, the flexibility of object manipulation is getting a hot topic, more and more a hot topic, uh, especially when it comes to warehousing uh, and store uh, robotics. And uh, overall, the topic grasping and gripping is very important. It always has been for robotics, but I think with the new technologies around cloud computing and artificial intelligence, the importance of having a, a good object trip is rising. So you have a lot of work to do for the future at Schung. I think we, we can be uh, looking positively in the future, yes, because the applications are growing everywhere and uh, on a lot of robots you need uh, a gripper on so i think we are in the right market segment okay thank you hendrik for your insights and now i take a look around and see what other experts say for on the future of robotics thank you now i want to find out what robots are doing in the health healthcare sector and that's why i'm talking to stefano stramigioli right now stefano what are you researching in uh, at the moment? What should robots do in the healthcare sector within the next years? Uh, one of the things we are doing is using robots for oncology. And the way we do it is that we couple the beauty of imaging that is now available, like MR, CT and ultrasound, to steering robots to reach locations in the body to take either biopsy for diagnostics or possibly ablate, which means to kill the tumor in, in place. And what is the advantage? Why are you using robots for that? So robots can be very precise and can be directly communicated with the imaging modality. Instead, a, a radiologist who does things by hand can, cannot be as precise as a robot and does not directly have access to all the details information of the imaging. So um, what do you think? How long will it take until uh, this kind of things will be, will be uh, happening in real life so that doctors can use it? One big problem for robotics in healthcare is certifications, uh, but I think that within five to ten years we'll see a lot of revolutions in healthcare. Okay, thank you for your insights. Looking forward to see uh, robots who are doing surgeries or something like that in the future. Thank you, Stefano. Soft robotics are another future topic here, and that's why I'm talking with Jamie Paik right now. She's from the Reconfigurable Robotics Lab in Lucerne. Jamie. What do you do different? What's the approach of soft robotics? Um, 
Soft Robotics is a new paradigm of design robots, meaning we are not necessarily only design robots for augmented mechanical performance of classical robots, meaning superhuman powers, meaning faster, stronger, more precise than robot, uh, humans. But this is a new way of design robot, meaning it's going to be more adaptable, safer, and reconfigurable depending on its random tasks and interactions in the environment. So it can do different tasks. Can you give you an, a specific example of one of your soft robots? For example, um, we built robots out of soft silicone, meaning these are the robots that you can wear, you can move with them, and when it when you need a assistance, for example, right before falling, it can activate to give you a rigidity, a muscle force on the areas that you want to have. Uh, for example, about to fall, you need a, a stiffness on your back or a side, side of your body. If you have a bad posture while you're a construction worker, you need additional support your arms or shoulders. So these are the robots that will let you have this type of support when you need it. But when it's off, you will be like clothing that you can walk around with. Uh, sounds interesting. And is there anything that uh, robotic suppliers in the industry can learn from your approach of soft robotics? I think trying to use different materials, for example, using silicone or rubber, it's not the typical material that we use for quote unquote classical robots. But having this access to new materials and actuators, then you can create different type of workspace, design space to design new type of robots that is more interactive and wearable. Okay, thank you, Jamie, for your insights to soft robotics. To find out more about the future of industrial robots, I'm talking to Niels Jul Jakobsen now. He's the founder of Mobile Industrial Robotics. Niels, what do you think will be the next big thing in industrial robots? We think it will be cloud robotics. It's been around for some years in talks, and now it's coming for real. And uh, can you explain it? What will happen if cloud robotics coming? What's changing then? I think uh, it's the ability to move a lot of data to the cloud and process them with all this uh, new technology coming from neural network and deep learning, we start to utilize that. And we work together with uh, Google on their new cloud robotics initiative. And that's going to be launched in 2019 here. And we are part of that. And I think people will see two or three years from now that that's going to be very natural that robots will be integrated with the cloud in a new way. Does it make it easier to use the mobile industrial robots if you use the cloud robotics approach? Yeah, and I also think it gets much easier to gain more knowledge, especially in warehouses. You would like to get some business knowledge on what's going on and, and how can you make your robots being used even better. And is there already an application running on cloud robotics? Right now we have some demonstration ones running in Germany at a company called Beckler and together with SAP, where they just run some ordering queuing system. And that's what I'll present tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Looking interesting to the future of robotics. Thank uh, Niels for your insights. Another future topic in robotics is robot learning. Next to me is Jan Peters from the University of Darmstadt. Jan, what was the most exciting thing a robot learned at your lab? Well, we actually managed to teach a robot to play basic table tennis at the quality level of a 10-year-old child, and that was pretty exciting. <laughs> that sounds good. And how can you empower robots to learn things each human can do? Well, we do it actually quite similar to a tennis teacher. So we take the robot by the hand, we show it by some demonstrations so that it has a basic idea of what to do. Subsequently, we give it school grades, one for good robot, six for bad robot, and afterwards it actually learns how to improve to get a better and better grade. And who is faster in the end, humans or robots? Well, so far the hardware is quite limiting in terms of the quality of gameplay. It's actually not the speed which is limiting, since robots can get very high speed, but humans can accelerate amazingly because we have these wonderful muscles and these lightweight arms, which just beat the robot arms. Okay, thank you very much, Jan, for your insights. Now, we already learned a lot about uh, the future of robotics and what kind of impacts it has on industries like service robotics, healthcare, robot programming, soft robotics, or even on the industry. 
What do you think? Do you agree with what the expert said or do you have another opinion? I'm really interested, so please write me a comment or send me an email to susan.nerdinger at produktion.de. Thanks and goodbye.